Hello, welcome, welcome back. back to Dream Daddy, where we're all daddies at heart. We sure are. We're just hot. We're all just hot dads trying to find other Even hot if, dads. Even if you know, if you're a man, a woman, if you identify as somewhere in between or anywhere on the spectrum, we are all daddies. At this point, yeah, like w- w- this is a, right now. This playthrough is a community of hot dads. Just finding other hot dads. This is really a place where we can all let go of who we are in the real world and in the digital world become our dream dads. Our dad sonas. Our dad sonas. Let's get back into it. Amanda and I flop down onto the couch. Amanda has to shove some empty boxes out of the way before she can sit. Too bad we're going to be putting my stuff right back in these boxes in a few months. No, don't say that. Aw, dad, it's going to be okay. I'll be fine. I know, I know. It's just, you're my little girl. It's going to be weird not having you around. I'll come visit, and I'll text you every day, and I'll take lots of pictures. I mean, obviously, I'm a photography major. You promise? Of course. Are you going to be okay by your lonesome? Oh, come on. I'll be fine. I'll get a dog or something. A dog! Forget art school. I'll stay for the dog. Is that what it's going to take? Medium-sized dog, handkerchief around the neck, I get to name it. That's That's what it'll cost me to give up on my dreams. A woman of simple wants and needs. Well... A dog is a lot cheaper than college. Amanda laughs. (laughs) Suddenly, a pile of envelopes slide through the mail slot. Speaking of college... Amanda darts over to the envelopes and shuffles through them. She pulls one out and throws the rest back on the floor. This is from McGowan College of Art and Design. Open it! Hmm. But I'm scared. It's just an envelope. Hmm. Yeah, it's just like my entire future. No big deal. She takes a deep breath and rips the letter open with her teeth. We have a letter opener, but okay... (laughs) <laughs> I hold my breath while Amanda's eyes dart back and forth, scanning the letter. What does it say? Uh, the admissions committee has reviewed your application and blah, blah, blah. Um, we... Her face drops. We regret to inform you that we are unable to offer you admission to McGowan College of Art and Design. Amanda throws the letter on the coffee table. Oh, sweetie. It's okay. I kind of saw it coming. I knew it... I knew I shouldn't have put that experimental stuff in my portfolio. Their admissions officer told me they just wanted to see portraits or whatever. I pull Amanda in for a big hug. You're an amazing photographer. I know how much work you put into your portfolio. Some other school is going to want to snatch you up for sure. Yeah, I know. It's fine. Are you actually fine or are you just saying that? I'm fine, really. Her face says the opposite, but I probably shouldn't push her on this. Oh, and before I forget, Emma R and MRP are sleeping over tonight. So... You need me out of the way because I'm painfully uncool? I would choose more delicate phrasing, but yes. Well, I'll have you know that I conveniently already have plans for tonight, so you'll have the new place to yourself. Not smart. Not smart, Paul. No, not a good move? Yeah, what are your plans? Quick, think of plans. (laughs) I'm going clubbing. (laughs) I'm going to put on a nice outfit and go tear it up on the dance floor. All the hottest dance moves. The lawnmower, the sprinkler, the running man. You know, all the ones the kids these days are doing. All right, but I'm not going to come pick you up if you pull anything this time. Not again. I'm just kidding. I'm actually going to... Go out (laughs) and watch the game? (laughs) Nice. (laughs) Which game? You know, the game. The one that's on tonight. The game on TV at somewhere other than here. Okay, cool. Well, you're going to do that? I'm going to do drugs and commit some light arson with the Emmas. I'm concerned you're hanging out with the wrong crowd. Amanda shrugs. I would have expected you guys to be up to white collar crime by this point. Maybe some money you're laundering at the least. I'm a street rat, Pops. You're kidding about doing drugs and crime, right? Uh, yes, Dad. Just making sure. I give her a pat on the head. <laughs> Have fun with your sports. Are you being sarcastic? No, making fun of sports is played out. All right, then. It's so not played out. I do some light cleaning around the house and decide to clear out right before Amanda's friends arrive. Before I leave, Amanda stops me. Hey, don't forget you have that meeting with my English teacher tomorrow. Oh, right. Mr. Vega. Yep, totally remembered. I'll be there. All right, we're going to go watch the game. Wow, I really didn't think this plan through. I'm not entirely sure where the closest bar is, and Amanda still hasn't shown me how to use the GPS on my phone, so I'm just going to pick a direction and walk in it. Let's go 
this way. Cool. Okay, we're marching. We're marching in the direction of the game. Any game, really, in the <laughs> distance. Could it be? A big, burned-out neon sign hangs above a tiny bot dive bar. Jim and Kim's, huh? It'll do. This bar is small and dimly lit. The crack of the pool balls sound in the back as patrons laugh and joke. A string of multicolored Christmas lights hover above the bartender. I can't tell if he's Jim or Kim. I pull up a seat at the bar. You want to do the bartender? No, you got bartender. Because <clears throat> it's going to be a dual only conversation. Oh, yeah. What'll it be? He's British. One beer, please. Sure thing, boss. The bartender slides me an ice cold beer. I take a sip and enjoy the refreshing taste. Say, are you Jim or Kim? I'm Neil. Oh. I awkwardly <laughs> turn my attention to the game, which is playing on one of the TVs on the wall. As luck would have it, my team of preference is not only playing, but is currently in the lead, which is always a good thing. The brightly colored mascot, which is some kind of animal, does cartwheels. I silently cheer on my favorite my favored team, hoping that I don't get into any confrontational arguments with a fan of the opposing team. Several people in this bar are wearing the distinctive colors of the team I dislike, although I believe from their demeanor that, like me, the passion for their team is all in good fun. <laughs> A middle-aged woman holding a nearly empty wine glass slides up to the bar and sits uncomfortably close to me. Hey, God, she sailor. does meth. More meth in that voice. Oh, hello. What's a, what's a meth voice? Like your teeth are rotting. She, she doesn't talk. She doesn't do meth. She's wearing a cross. She's Christian. That means she does more meth than the average bear. I'm sticking with the. Vo it's a good. It's a gummy voice. Talk just with your. Like there's no teeth in there. <laughs> Good to see fresh meat in here. I'm Mary. Come here often? Oh, no. I actually just moved into this part of town today. I'm Paul, by the way. Are you watching the game? Yes. My preferred team <laughs> is in the lead. If they keep this up, they'll win the game with ease. Oh, I love that team. And I also love that game. I love someone who knows her way around balls. I'm getting the impression that she's a little drunk. And high on meth, apparently. Uh... Buy a gal a drink? Gonna buy her a drink or not buy her a drink? I'm not gonna give her money because then she'll go buy meth. You're just gonna buy her a drink. What are you gonna... No, no I'm, I'm not. I, no. Look, look, I don't know what your dad does, okay? I'm sorry. My dad, I'm sorry. My dad Chill, is... Chill, dude. Sorry. My dad does not buy people drinks. <laughs> uh, maybe some other time? Shoot yourself, Baylor. Mary saunters off, setting her sights on the newest bar patron to enter. I happily watch the game over another beer. The game has gotten close in terms of points, a little <laughs> too close than what I am comfortable with. <laughs> After a particularly skilled player scores a number of points for the other team, putting them in the lead, I hear an affirmative grunt from another man in the bar. Go team! It's the brooding man from the coffee spoon. He sits alone, sipping whiskey and watching the game as well. He sounds like Hugh Jackman. Like enjoying Australian? the game mm, like like wolverine just kind of like a deep grumbled voice just like a deep, yeah like like rick thunder yeah i am now that we're winning oh we must be rooting for different teams in my opinion my team is far superior i have to disagree with that based upon our win loss record i'd say that my team is superior that's where you're wrong since it stands right now my team is beating yours the conversation ends there, and we both go back to silently rooting for our respective teams. The game is close, with both sides playing their hardest to win. But in the end, my team prevails. Quiet cheers ripple throughout the bar. I fucking love this writing. I raise a respectful glass at the man drinking whiskey. He raises his in a response. An unspoken truce is formed between us, based on mutual love of the game. He <laughs> motions capitals. to the bartender, who pours two glasses of whiskey. The man slides one over to me. The name's Robert. Thanks, I'm Paul. Hey. Oh, that's Danny Sexbang. You must be new here. Mary already hit on you? Yeah. Mm. Robert chuckles. Uh. She's a peach. Well, you picked the best bar in town. As slimy as it is, you'll never find a better spot than Jim and Kim's. Is there actually a Jim or Kim that runs this place? No, that'd be Neil. Neil waves from across the book. Hey. Good guy, Neil. Not enough <laughs> Neils in this world. Oh. Okay. <laughs> you a whiskey fella or a beer fella? Beer, but I'll drink most things. You like shots? <laughs> I love shots. <laughs> Thank God. Robert nods to Neil, who serves up two shots of whiskey. He hands one to me. 
Here's your health. Here's to your health. <laughs> we take the shots. The whiskey burns going down, but I try my hardest to look tough. Wait, I think this is what making friends is. <laughs> okay, Paul, this guy's out of my friend league, but I think if I play my cards right, we'll be pals in no time. What are you gonna do here? You gonna you wanna impress Robert? I want to impress him. If I bring up tattoos, that makes me lame because then he'll yeah. see that I have none. Right. I like your cool leather jacket. Everyone likes to be complimented on what they're wearing. That's exactly right. I like your jacket. Thanks. Been in my family a long time. Passed down from firstborn to firstborn. Cursed, some would say. Man, this guy is mysterious and cool. Way cooler than I am, at least. Robert signals to the bartender for another round. What are you doing here tonight? Ooh. You got it. You want to be cool. Ah, uh, man, I want to be cool if I if I like say I have being kids. A, that's being a, deal a hot breaker. dad is cool, right? But you also want to you want to like you don't want it to be like, "Oh, my kids are my whole life." Like you don't want to be like that, right? Yeah. I'm You don't want to say trying to make friends cuz that's just lame. Yeah, that's lame and saying my daughter kicked me out of the house is super lame. Running right. from my problems. The usual. I like your style. He gets up. I... Be right back. Got to powder my nose. Never seen Robert this talkative. He must like you. Huh, I guess so. I gotta admit that Robert has a gruff charm to him. If a guy like that thinks I'm cool, then I really must be. Robert comes back from the bathroom and grabs his leather jacket. I'm gonna go home. You heading my way? Robert and I leave the bar to find ourselves walking in the same direction. I live in this cul-de-sac down the way. Does everybody live there? Me too. We just finished unpacking today. Uh, great place to be. Good neighbors. Well, some of them. Who's that? We get to Robert's house, which is just a few houses away from mine. We stop and he turns to me. I don't kiss and tell, Paul. Hmm. So are we doing this or what? What? Oh. You know, do you want to come inside or not? <laughs> a wave of realization rushes over me. Oh, what are you going to do? It's a turning point. It's a pivotal moment in your life. I don't really like Robert. Okay. But I'll be a good neighbor and I'll smile and nod. Uh, like you will go in? I will go into his house. All right. Just to, you know, but I won't, I won't make out with him because I don't like him. He's not my type. Okay. I need a, I need a good, clean, respectable man who's also going to take care of my daughter. Gotcha. Gotcha. I'm not going to lay it on smooth. Smile and nod. Let's do it. I follow him up to his door. He fumbles with his keys for a second and unlocks the door, leading me inside. The moment the door closes behind us, he pushes me up against the wall and kisses me, grabbing my hips. Come on. Robert takes my hand and leads me up the way to the stairs and to what I assume is his bedroom, but it's so dark I can't see anything but Robert's intense expression. <laughs> he kisses me again and I can hear him shucking off his jacket. I cum clumsily take off mine, too. His hands roam down my chest and suddenly he's tugging at my belt. I, uh, I don't normally do this. Do you want to stop? No. <laughs> Wait a 180 flip. Good. Wait a 180 flip on your fucking morals, Tyler. Hey, look, look. <laughs> Once he started doing I'm it, it became fun, hot. I'm a fun dad. Okay. This is also your first gay experience, remember? Oh, in the game. Yeah. I mean, in real life, too. Yes. Yeah. Let's have some fun. You're skipping past these dialogue boxes. Mighty quick. Wait a minute. This isn't my old house or my new house. Oh, right. I look around for Robert, but find myself alone. Hello? There's clatter from the bathroom and the door opens. Robert is fully dressed and grabs his keys. That was fun. Yeah, it was. You should go. That's certainly not what I was expecting. We'll uh, talk to you later. Sure. Your clothes are over there. Hey. I hastily get dressed and show myself out. The sun is unbearably bright. I need to lie down. I start to make my way back home when I suddenly remember... Amanda! I rush back home and throw the door open. Something smells delicious. Amanda? Amanda runs out of the kitchen and looks slightly disappointed. Aw, oh, man. I was kind of hoping you'd gotten kidnapped and I was going to have to come rescue you. No. I uh, made a friend at the bar last night and ended up sleeping over at his place. Where are the Emmas? They left a little while ago. Oh. You guys have fun? Yeah. Watched some movies, ate snacks, stole a car. You know, the usual sleepover stuff. You teens in your larceny. 
<laughs> so, this breakfast that's cooking, what's that all about? Well, there's hash browns and eggs and bacon. Can I? Uh. Yes, you can have some breakfast. Bless you, sweet child. My head throbs. Ugh, gotta do something about this hangover. Amanda, your loving father might have overdone it last night. <laughs> Ooh, somebody's hungover. Father of the year. You wouldn't ha you wouldn't happen to have any aspirin or I've got just a thing. Hang on. Amanda runs to the fridge and pulls out a jar of pickles. Amanda, what? Drink this. The pickle juice? Hey. Yep. It's what I use and I would assume someone used. I would also assume that it works pretty well. Although I've never tried it before and I won't try it, obviously. Turn your resigned side eye. That's funny. <laughs> I, I'm, a, I'm a dad that does the side eye. Okay. My daughter lives her own life. Yeah. I give. You, you would have done I it at her age, right? I, absolutely. I mean, no, I wouldn't have. This better work. I down a sip of the tart oh. juice. No, no, more than that. Way more than that. I mean, I assume. Eh? Watch it, you. I drink more pickle juice and help myself to the delicious breakfast that Amanda has graciously allowed me to partake in. After inhaling some hash browns and dunking several pieces of bacon into runny egg yolk, I'm starting to feel a little better. Amanda grabs her backpack and keys. Well, gotta get to class. Don't forget the meeting with Mr. Vega, okay? He said it was important. Love ya. I'll be there. Knock him dead, kiddo. Always do. We do our secret handshake and she's off. I get a little work done at home before I glance at my watch and see that it's almost time for the meeting. I hop in the shower, change clothes, and head on my way. Still a little hungover. Ty, you think we should have this meeting with the teacher next episode? We absolutely should. I, I'm still reeling from my hangover and yeah. from my awful decisions. Yeah, it was, that was a rough night. That was a rough night. I, I I regret it a little bit. You jumped in the deep end. I jumped into the deep end, but you know what? I'm brave, I'm bold, I'm brash, and I'm a hot fucking dad. Thanks for watching. Thank you.